All right. Good blessed morning, everybody. Good blessed morning. I wanted to come on here really quickly and touch on um, mourning the dead because, in all honestly, it is a form of um, worship because you're idling what somebody was. And in all honestly, when they died, they either pass on the glory or pass on to eternal damnation, depending on you know how God decided to judge them. So, in the Bible, um, if we read about the death of Joseph, it says in the Bible, the uh, fixed time that his sons mourned Joseph was seven days, a period of seven days. I've known someone who I've tried to, uh, who I've tried to counsel that's been in mourning um, and, you know, it's led to very destructive behavior. Uh, this person has been in mourning for about a year and a half and I'm like look man in all honesty that person ain't thinking about you because their spirit is no longer in the body um, they're either in uh, hell or heaven right now they're not coming back here for you and you know I'm like I really don't want to like hurt them like that but you know, I, I have to be truthful about it and the same and the same thing with my with my relative that just passed like I know that uh, you know there are people that's going to be in mourning but what more mourning is mourning can be it can it can really be a trap and a detriment Cause like I said before we uh, as humans we tend to idolize this person's life like more like when superstars die you know, like I, I got caught up in it and, and five years, I was mourning for, for about what, five, six, seven years. I, I, I just let it go. Cause it was my grandmother and she had passed, she had died right beside me and I was really close with her. And I mean, it took me all this time to realize, it took me all that time to realize how much I allowed that to put a hold on my life. Because in all honesty, when she passed in 2010, the moment she died, her spirit was ejected from her body and she went on to God for judgment. So she wasn't, she wasn't at her funeral. She wasn't watching over me. She's either in hell or she's either in heaven at that, at that point. Meanwhile, grief and mourning has me putting my life on hold. It has me, it has, it's taken me off of what God has ordained for my life. It's taken me off of the destiny that he has for me. And all honestly, that's one of the best traps that the, that the devil can set. When he keeps you in mourning for years. Because as long as you're preoccupied with what was, which is looking back, you're not focusing on what's ahead of you, which is where God is trying to take you. Man, that is a beautiful sight, man. So I wanted to touch on that today. I normally say 30 days is more than a sufficient mourning period. I I can't remember which part, which scripture it was, but I'll have to look it up. But I can't remember what scripture it was, but they there was there was someone they were in mourning for 30 days. Um, but like I said, when Joseph died, his sons were only uh, were only in mourning for a seven day period. So they mourned a week and then they had to get back to doing the work. Because like I said, like when when, when when like when I die, I'm not going to be at my funeral crying with you guys. You know, this corpse is just going to be. It's just going to be here. I'm going. I'm either going to be in hell or, or I'm either going to be in glory with God, depending on how I'm judged. So, you know, my family can cry for me. They can do whatever they need to do to get themselves together. But after seven days, I'm going to need y'all to get back to doing the work of God. I'm going to need you guys to get back to 
doing the work for the kingdom and spreading and spreading the gospel you know i need y'all to get back to the status quo because i'm not going to be in this vessel anymore i'm not going to be in this body anymore you know my work will be done here and you guys will still have a job to do so i wanted to make this quick video to address it because that's been kind of heavy on my heart because i've been um I said, I've been trying to counsel her through it. Her friend had committed uh, suicide, but he had left a note for her saying, oh, well, hey, I loved you and all this stuff like that. And I'm like, that's cute. But if you guys were destined to be together, if it was God's will, he would have told you that before he left. And that sounds hard. It really does. It sounds hard to a lot of people. But in all actuality, <laughs> God has a plan for all of us. The people that we're going to be with and get with and do things with, it will happen, okay? The people that we are not intended to be with, it's not, God will never let it happen. And then, and then occasionally, because of our free will, we'll sometimes try to force something to happen. And then God will have to correct that. So, I hope you guys got uh, some knowledge out of this. Um, I said, I forgot the script, but it's in the story of Joseph. Uh, and we all know Joseph was the prophet who interpreted dreams from Pharaoh. Uh, but Joseph got, when he was about 11 years old, Joseph had a, he just, he just had a hard life. Like right, when he was about 11 years old, he had a dream about the moon and the sun, the moon and the sun, which represented his parents. So he already had a spiritual discernment to interpret these dreams so he understood the sun and the moon represented his father and his mother as the moon and the, uh, his father's the sun his mother's the moon and the stars were bowing down to him representing his brothers because i think joseph was the youngest of 11 so his brothers heard about this they got snobby and decided well we're going to try to kill him so they led him out they led him out to be assassinated at the last minute his oldest brother actually saved him and they just cast him down in a ravine or a chasm uh, for him to be uh, picked up and sold into slavery but you guys can get in that story and read the rest of that but that's a pretty interesting story um, in itself the story of the uh, of the prophet Joseph who interpreted the dreams but I want to make this quick video to address the, the state of mourning uh, but you guys have a blessed day um, I pray the entire arm of God over you guys, the viewers of this video, and myself as well, and my family, and your family as well, so that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy during these dark times. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I, I, I truly do pray that you guys have a blessed day, and um, you know, always stay with God, man. Take care.